Since the dawn of the new millennium, the United Nations has been warning of the grave consequences of rampant overfishing around the globe. But the story gets worse. Illegal and unlicensed trawlers fishing alongside legitimate boats cause yet more damage. The problem of illegal fishing is enormously widespread. We've had estimates that assess the problem at around 20% of uh, the global catch. These vessels have targeted the territorial waters of some of the poorest and most vulnerable countries in the world, often sneaking in after dark. They go in there and they put up their lights and they mask their call signs. They break fishermen's nets and they hit their boats. And if such things happen, lives can be lost. Today, Earth Report asks the question, will a multi-million dollar illegal fishing industry destroy local fishing communities around the world? the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of West Africa. It's one of the most fertile fishing grounds in the world. For thousands of years, it supported small coastal communities. But as the world's appetite for fish has grown larger, these seas have attracted fishing vessels from everywhere. About half fish legally, but 48% are believed to operate beyond the law. Illegal fishing is taking place everywhere, all around the world, and even in our own waters. Everybody's doing it. As fish stocks decline, there's more and more illegal activities taking place. Do you have fleets operating outside any kind of control, doing what they want, the real pirates? Both Greenpeace and the Environmental Justice Foundation have tracked vessels fishing off the coast of some of the poorest countries in Africa. <laughs> Helene Bors, a fisheries expert, has been tracking illegal and unlicensed boats for over 20 years. It's a hidden world few people know about. These vessels stay at sea for years. They transfer their fish onto other vessels, they get refueled at sea. The screws are changed at sea, etc. So nobody sees what's happening. There's nobody, nobody to go there and tell them to respect the rules. It's another world. Half the boats fishing in the rich waters off the West African coast are legal, half illegal. Countries of this impoverished region are too poor to control their waters, an added incentive for illegal fishing vessels. The territory of these countries extends 200 nautical miles into the Atlantic. Foreign vessels must have a license to fish. There's also a 12-mile zone which is reserved almost exclusively for local fishermen. These zones provide a source of revenue and a means of managing fisheries. But unless these coastal waters are patrolled, foreign vessels can fish them illegally, without valid licenses and with impunity. Travelling along the West African coast, there is bountiful testimony about the activities of the illegal fishing boats. In Guinea, almost every coastal settlement has been affected. During the night, they come close to the shore and trawl the seabed. Early in the morning, about 4 or 5 a.m., that's when they leave. At night time, illegal vessels can stay hidden using no navigation lights, leaving local fishermen vulnerable. No. Almani Kamara was fishing at night when a trawler without lights appeared out of the dark. 
We hauled the fishing line quickly, but by the time we had started the engine and turned away, the trawler was making straight for us. In the time it took us to alter course, the trawler hit us, and a few minutes later our canoe was broken in two, and we were in the water. As he shows us his scars, he knows he's lucky to be alive. Three companions drowned. Moving up the West African coast, members of the Sierra Leonean fishing communities echoed the tales. They told their stories to a government fisheries officer. He's the master fisherman uh, here at Tombo. He's basically representing the fishermen. So then the inner might. So the trawler, why they talk so far, we left four uh, Europe here. Amadou Seaport Kamara told us foreign boats were a then, constant then threat. Kenya, there had been an incident where the trawler actually rolled over the boat. All the fishermen were thrown uh, overboard, they went into the sea and then they, 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 they swim to escape, to, to secure their lives. Sometimes there are even accidents where trawlers have inflicted some wounds into fishermen. They have, they have this, this kind of case is rampant, not only in Tombo, but all around the other fishing villages. It's hard to quantify the impact of illegal fishing on local communities, but anecdotal evidence suggests it's been hitting them hard. They can no more fish the way they used to do because, for example, they, waste, they have just wasted about, um, about uh, 12 gallons of, of, of petrol, no, 20, 25, of 25 gallons of, 25 pet, of gallon. petrol, and they only caught about, um, about six dozens of, of fish which cannot even buy one gallon of petrol. What are, what are these guys? Well, we're floating fish. OK. So I'll take you. I'll take you. Fisheries experts from the UK's Department for International Development have tried, over the past decade, to assess the scale of the problem, putting a figure on the cost to us all. In about 2005, we commissioned a major study of the impact of illegal fishing on developing countries and also on, on ecosystems and we were able to derive a total figure for the value of fish stolen, if you like, from the world per annum. And this figure was in the order of nine billion US dollars. The problem has affected the entire food chain. Smoking fish to preserve them was once a much bigger industry. Before, the canoes caught a lot of fish close to the shore. But now they have to go further away and are gone for a few days or even a week to find fish. West African nations have no money to patrol their waters constantly. But every so often, a pirate vessel has been caught. This fishing vessel is under arrest for fishing without a license, fishing illegally in Guinean waters. The coast of West Africa is just one region where illegal fishing has flourished. The main reason? Countries don't have the money to patrol their waters. An expedition supported by Greenpeace and the Environmental Justice Foundation aimed to curtail pirate fishing in the area. Two fishery inspectors from Guinea brought with them lists of trawlers licensed to fish in Guinean waters. The plan was to arrest any vessel found fishing illegally.
Looking for pirate vessels in West Africa is not difficult at all, unfortunately, because there are so many of them. You come across them as soon as you enter the, uh, the waters of those countries, and the closer you get to the coast, the more of these vessels you come across. It was one vessel after another. From the air, a group of Chinese trawlers was spotted. One of them was the Lian Run 14. It was just some 60 nautical miles off the Guinean coast, 140 miles inside Guinean territorial waters. The inspectors, therefore, had jurisdiction to check all the boats against their list of vessels licensed to fish. It's not just the stealing of fish that causes concern. Trawlers fishing contrary to regulations can do great harm to the marine environment. Many of the illegal vessels use huge weighted nets with an illegally fine mesh. These are scraped along the seabed, hoovering up everything in their path. It catches very uh, large amount of juvenile fishes. And it has reduced the recruitment rate. It has reduced the amount of fish that they used to catch before. A trawler catches vast quantities of fish, as well as many different varieties of sea life. Crew members pick through it, selecting only the fish they can easily sell. It's a wasteful method of fishing. Sometimes up to 70% of the catch has no economic value. It's simply shoveled over the side. Some of the fish are still alive, but after battering, they are unlikely to live to maturity. Assessing the long-term impact of illegal fishing on marine life is a matter of great concern to fisheries experts. Scientific assessments that are carried out are done on the basis of what we know about reported catches. If there is a large proportion of unreported or illegal catch, then that means that the scientists' assessments are necessarily going to be out possibly by orders of magnitude, which makes it very, very difficult indeed for, to manage uh, the fish stocks effectively. The evidence from places like the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, which publishes reports uh, every two years on the state of world fish stocks, is that illegal fishing in general has a devastating impact on fisheries resources. In the coastal states of Africa, this is troubling to officials. Fish is very important for Sierra Union. Let us look at the artisanal fishermen, because these are the small scale fishermen, and they supply most of the fish that the Sierra Unions eat. So, in any case, anything that stops them, they stops the Sierra Unions from getting the required protein, because they are providing 75% of the protein intake. So, there is where there is a serious problem. Back off the coast of Guinea, the inspectors found one of the Chinese vessels, named the Lian Run 14. It was not licensed. When they agree that we come on board, they're quite friendly, actually, and curious, because, I mean, put yourself in their place, they in the middle of you know, nowhere, of Africa. They there for a long time fishing, day night, day off, you know, just all the time. And suddenly there's this big blue ship arriving, <laughs> full of, you know, Westerners, most of them, <laughs> you know, white people, <laughs> uh, women, <laughs> which they may not have seen for a while. <laughs> so it's quite, uh, yeah, it's interesting. And so they always uh, keen to talk. Things soon took a more serious turn. The captain produced a license, but it was long out of date. When the captain produced the license dated 2003 to the Guinean inspector, you could see that he understood he was in big trouble. 
I don't see. He is not on the list. Tell him. It is very good for him now to to do whatever we want now. If not, we are going to stay here and to call back. People will come. The ship will come and we will arrest him. We will take him in our ship. We will carry him and the ship will follow us. This fishing vessel is under arrest for fishing without a license, fishing illegally in Guinean waters. They never expected a, a patrol, surveillance patrol to come that far from shore because they know the Guinean authorities don't have the means to come that far. In the course of the month-long trip conducted by Greenpeace in the Environmental Justice Foundation, 92 foreign boats were seen fishing in Guinean waters. Around half were operating illegally. In a similar surveillance operation in neighboring Sierra Leonean waters several years ago, the last time such a survey was conducted, the UN's Food and Agricultural Organization found that only just over 50% of the vessels were operating legally. Today, the precise figures of which vessels are fishing legally and which are fishing illegally remains unknown. But officials worry that illegal fishing fleets dwarf most national fleets. China's the largest fisher in the world, and legal fishing will come second. So we're speaking of those dimensions. And the fishing carried out legally by countries like the European Union uh, very large fishing countries like, like Chile and like Peru would rank after illegal fishing. So we're speaking of a very, very big problem. In 2005, there were 1,200 large-scale fishing vessels registered in the 14 largest flag of convenience countries. A detailed search discovered that there's about 1,000 vessels that we don't know where they are, we don't know where they're fishing, that are not authorized to fish. That means they must be fishing illegally. And not only are officials in the dark, some observers suggest this illegality is hidden even from many of the trawlermen on the boats. When you board the vessel, you see the, the human beings behind pirate fishing, and most of the crew don't even know what they're doing is illegal. They don't know. I mean, they've just been told to go to that ship uh, for such a period of time, two, three years. So they don't know what they're doing is wrong. Uh, the captain certainly should know. The day after the arrest, the Lian Run 14 was escorted to the port of Conakry, where the ship and its cargo were impounded. The crew was kept on board, which happens in many cases. They're not put in jail, but being held on board their own vessel is the same as being put in jail, really. The crew is never really sure whether their company is going to pay the fine or not, and whether they will be released or not, or when they'll be released, so it can be a long time. The Guinean authorities reported the Lian Run 14's owners were fined and the fish confiscated before the vessel was released. If you can read me from Channel 16, this is naval patrol boat. But this is not always the case. UK advisers in the region say it is not unusual in other instances for ships to be released with only a warning after a bribe. You've got the issue of enforcing the licences, enforcing fines, all the sort of bureaucratic process, which, to be quite candid, in a, in a third world country that is you know, developing very, very slowly, it's very near the bottom of the index, it is a real big deal getting all this to work and making sure that the revenue comes in and ends up in the Ministry of Finance as opposed to elsewhere within this country. The real price of pirate fishing is being paid by local communities. Local fishermen complain about those trawlers coming inshore very, very close to where they fish and causing accidents and death every year. Uh, so it's stealing the fish, killing people, and uh, endangering the marine environment and, and uh, the fish stocks uh, all over the world. In the region of Sierra Leone, Liberia and Guinea, we've estimated that the value of the fish is something like $150 million a year uh, being stolen by 
foreign vessels. And if we think about these, the high-value fish, these are the ones, of course, that could have major impacts on the economies here, which are very poor. So we're very concerned about that. West Africa is close to the booming European fish market. Fish could be an important export earner. But instead, much of this income is going to illegal fishing fleets. Developing countries, and particularly those in West Africa and the Pacific, for example, uh, that depend very largely on fish stocks as a source of income, really have no alternative source of income. In programme two, how the pirates smuggle fish into Europe. And life on an extraordinary fleet of support ships. Nobody would want to be stuck on this boat. <laughs> 